miss being able to stand in this building with all of you and sing especially songs like the one that we just sang I miss the handshakes and the hugs most especially what we do together in singing our praise to God I miss it I hope you miss it too I really do as we look this month at the topic of looking to thee looking at God and having our eyes opened we're going to look today at heaven should be the best topic that, that we could think about that we would boast about so to start do you count down days to certain things? I know that there are three people in one in particular car that showed up late this morning that can tell you exactly how many days there are until December 25th. I'm not picking on them. I love them very much. We all we probably know who they are. They can tell you how many days it is. How many days until you go on vacation or maybe on a cruise or something like that? How many days, and if they ever come out with the schedule, is it until opening tip-off for this year's season? We don't know how many days it is until we get to go to heaven. Hopefully, we'll have many, many days that are full of joy. Some of us have more days than others. And if the Lord chooses to not delay then let it be that there are no more days and that his son come before the setting of the sun on this day. Whatever time frame is chosen, let God be glorified. In the meantime, let's think about heaven. Let's look at heaven in Hebrews chapter 10. Let's start reading in verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. What day? What day did we gather together today to point toward? What day do we or are we supposed to be encouraging one another about? Well, last Sunday morning we spoke quite a bit from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We'll read three verses there, starting in 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the shout of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The encourage is about that day of salvation. It's not just said here. Whenever Peter is writing about the end of the world, the end of time, he says in 2 Peter, and I encourage you to, to turn to this scripture with me in 2 Peter 3. We'll, there are several references to it. 2 Peter 3, we'll read now, verses 11 and 12. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt away as they burn? And we're supposed to look forward to this. It's, it's written in here twice that we're looking forward to hastening the day when Jesus returns looking forward to it, being ready for it, like a finish line at the end of a race, ready for the 
eternal reward. It's supposed to be on our minds. It's supposed to be a thought of encouragement. It's supposed to be how we stir one another up or one of the ways that we stir one another up. Hey, I'm going to heaven. You're going too, right? We're looking forward to it. I want to see you there. In the next verse, verse 13, according to his promise, we are waiting for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. We're waiting for our salvation. We're waiting to leave a place where we have to deal with governments. We're waiting to leave a place where we have to deal with sickness, where we have to deal with trouble, where we have to deal with what is it that's bothering you? All of the things, the negativity, all of the problems of earth, let them burn away, be dissolved and melt. Let me go home. Don't you want to go? Don't you want to go home? We're waiting for that promised salvation. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, starting in verse 12, I thank him who has given, given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he has judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecute, persecutor, an insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving a full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me as foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. I'm waiting on eternal life. If you're visiting with us this morning, if you're not familiar with uh, this congregation, understand that those who are parked beside you are waiting for our Savior. We are waiting for and we're counting the days, even though we can't count the days, as a phrase. We're, we're counting it down until we can go home for eternity. We can be saved to live with him forever we're not perfect and we don't gather here today to brag about who we are or what we do if we brag about anything then we are told in scripture that it should be about our salvation about our salvation in jesus christ and like paul has written in timothy this last scripture that we just looked at it's not because we're good people it's because jesus christ makes us saved people None of us are perfect, and we don't, or we shouldn't, brag about being, being better than anyone else. Not at all. But because of the blood of Christ, we are saved people, and because of that, we want to brag about it. We do this best in song. It's my opinion. It's not written in the Bible that we do this best in song. It's my opinion. We talk about going to heaven best whenever we're singing about it. The last song that was just led, Sing to Me of Heaven. Um, I'm really looking forward to singing that with you, with so many people, with voices blended and raised. I miss it. I miss the encouragement of you saying, I'm going to heaven. Me too. I asked you this week on, on the Facebook, those who were in the messenger, if, if you had the opportunity to reply, what are some of your family, your brothers and sisters, favorite songs about heaven? There, The numbers are written in your uh, handout. The titles of them, if you don't have time to flip to every one of them, are Heaven Holds All to Me. Won't it be wonderful there? How beautiful heaven must be. When we all get to heaven, that one, number 358, is underlined, and we'll circle back to that one. Thank you, Leslie. This world is not my home. When all of God's singers get home, wonderful city of God, precious memories, where the soul never dies, sing to me of heaven and just a little talk with Jesus. 
I'm sure that we could come up with more. In fact, we had one member who asked if they could put down more than one because it was too difficult to decide between the one that they selected and Beulah Land. But you can't put Beulah Land on there because you didn't have enough room. See, I snuck it in anyway. We sing about heaven so well, and it's an encouragement. That's where I want to go. Singing is, according to Colossians, teaching and admonishing. So in our singing about heaven, we are teaching and admonishing. We are telling each other, this is where I want to go, and that's where I want to be. I can't wait for all of God's singers to get home. You want to come back in and sing with us, sing together as a group? Can you only imagine singing with all of the millions of saints saved, all of God's faithful children from the beginning, singing together around the throne when all of God's singers get home? We brag about heaven. We're supposed to boast about heaven, and that verse is coming up. But we do it because we're saved. Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 8, says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. There is something that, that we should address, and that is that you cannot earn your way into heaven. You can't be good enough. There are a couple of times that I've found recently where I hear the phrase, well, we just can't be good. And I, I don't feel like I'm good enough. And if you extrapolate out what that argument is, it is if I worked harder, I could be good enough. Brothers and sisters, you can't. And I don't say that as a matter of discouragement. You can't be good enough. You are saved by grace through faith. Because of that, you should be as good as you can. But we're saved because God loves us, not because we earned it, not because we can do anything to make ourselves worthy of it. We are completely unworthy, but we're saved by him. We're saved by the sacrifice that he made in his love for us. And because of that, because we have received salvation from him, because we've been baptized into his name and accepted that free gift, sin has no dominion over us. It has no power over us, according to Romans 6 and 14. Later on in that chapter, in verse 22, now you have been set free from sin and become slaves to, of God. The fruit that you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin are death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because we have been saved, we're not given to sin. We stay away from it because that's not who we're supposed to be. It's not supposed to show in our lives that we are sinful people. But what is supposed to show in our lives is that we are living for God because he has saved us and now we belong to him. And those that do so, according to Romans 8 in the first two verses, those who live according to him have no condemnation because they are in Christ Jesus. Under the law of the spirit, of, we are under the law of the spirit of life that has set us free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. And because of that, Hebrews 3 and 6 tells us that we're supposed to brag about it. Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house, if indeed we hold fast to our confidence and our boasting in our hope. We often pray something like, and if we are found faithful, grant us a home with thee in heaven. 
I want to ask you to reconsider that statement if that's a way that you pray. And don't take this the wrong way. I'm not attacking anyone. I'm asking you to consider that it is promised that if we are faithful, we will find a home with him. And that it's also told to us as much as a commandment of not living for sin, but living for God, that we boast in our hope. So while I hope that each of you paid attention to your mouth this week and did not say anything that was not edifying and did not build each other up, that was not fitting for the moment or the occasion, and that while you watched your activities that you didn't do anything that was malicious or covetous or licentious or of, of a nature of uh, the body, that you didn't give in to your physical temptations, I would also hope just as much and expect just as much that you boasted in your hope. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 6, boast in your hope. We are not a people that do not do. We are a people that were created to do. Do you brag about going to heaven? Do you boast in your hope of salvation? How many people did you interact with this week that know that you're going to heaven? We count down the days to the things that we look forward to. And especially on our social media platforms, we give our opinions of what that interaction is going to be. I'm looking forward to my cruise. I'm looking forward to my holiday season. I'm looking forward to brothers and sisters according to the command that you find here. Let people know that you're looking forward to going to heaven. Not that you're on the fence about it, not that you're worried that you won't make it, but that you are bragging in the salvation offered in Christ Jesus. It's important to be obedient, but let's look at three different scriptures that talk about our obedience and where they fit in with our salvation. The first one that we'll look at is Romans 6, verses 15 to 18. What then? Are we to sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present your body, if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, you have become slaves of righteousness because you are saved. That's how that chapter starts. This is how you're united with Jesus. If you are baptized into him and united with him in a death like his, then you shall surely be united with him in a resurrection, in a life, in eternal life like his. And because of that, because you have been saved, these are the actions that you carry out. Titus chapter 3, starting in verse 4. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life, the trustworthy The saying is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things so that those who believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people. Titus is told here that you are saved, and because you are saved, it's profitable for you to be devoted to good works. The last one we circle back to the passage in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is a gift from God, or a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God 
prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In Romans 6, in Titus 3, and in Ephesians 2, salvation is given. It has to be accepted, absolutely, but it's given, and you are saved. And because of that, you do good things. No amount of righteous deeds that you do, no amount of card sending, no amount of praying with each other, no amount of good activities that you're involved in will save you. You are saved by the sacrifice of Christ. Now, because of that, do good works. That we should walk in them is how this passage ends in Ephesians chapter 2. In effect, this is putting the cart before the horse. And while it makes no earthly sense how that works, that is exactly how our Heavenly Father has designed it. That He has granted us salvation, and because of that, we should walk in good works. The reason that I asked for you to give examples of what is your favorite song about heaven, if you go back and look at all of those songs that were selected, none of them mention our good works. Take your time, or you can trust me. I looked them all up. None of them mention our good works. We're looking forward to heaven. The one caveat is number 358. Again, thank you, Leslie. I say that because she, she's the one who, to, who wrote it down. And it is the closest that we get that talks about our works. Not songs about our toils being over, but about what we do. And in the third verse, we get the closest to what we're doing here on earth and going to heaven. Number 358, the third verse reads, Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. Even in this verse, and even in this song, it's because we're saved. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. We're supposed to encourage one another with our salvation. And because of that, consider how to stir one another up to love and good works. It's very difficult to do if you are constantly worried that you're not being good enough to be saved. If you're always worried that you're just not making the mark, how much encouragement can you give to someone else? Can you forsake your salvation? Absolutely. If you've been waiting for me to say that obedience is required, consider that you've been skipping all of the parts about encouragement. You've been skipping all of the parts about this is the example of who I am supposed to be. If you've been waiting for you've got to be good, understand the message that you are sending that there is work that I have to do to earn my salvation. While it's important to know that you're saved and to boast about it, you can't just walk away from God. Because we are saved, we're even more closely devoted to Him. It's not we're waiting for a paycheck. It's because we have been given more than this life could ever afford, we work for him. I told you to hang out in 2 Peter 3. We'll continue reading in verse 14. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, what are we waiting for? We're waiting for heaven. We're waiting for Christ to appear. We're waiting to be taken home with him. I'm, I'm waiting for that trumpet because I'm saved and I know it because I'm going home. I am to be diligent, to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. I wanna pause right there for a moment.
something that I did not intend whenever I wrote this, how important this is, especially at this moment, especially with all of the turmoil that's going on in our country, especially with the way that most of us disagree, especially the way that this state voted for the presidential election and how much worry that we have. I'll offer you a, a moment of concession here. If you think the country is over, then you're not trusting God enough. Be at peace. Your creator is in control. Because we're going to heaven, we are to be found without spot or blemish and at peace. Verse 15, and count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him or given him. As he does in all his letters, when he speaks in them of these matters, there are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do with other scriptures. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. If you go to church one time, and you, according to the Bible, receive salvation at that time. And you receive the blessings that God has given to you. You're baptized into his name and you walk away. There is absolutely the opportunity for you to be carried away, lawless, and lose your stability. The encouragement continues in verse 18 to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that all of your activities and all of your actions be glory to him as it ends, to him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Let your life be one that reflects the destination that you're traveling toward. We often call our, our struggles of the day or our life, our walk, or our walk with God. It's often used as a metaphor throughout scripture. Not only do we consider our daily walk or our daily struggles and every moment that passes to be our daily walk, we're told in numerous passages that we're supposed to look to God to light our path, that his instructions be a light to our path. We follow that path because we've been saved. We've got our ticket to enter the pearly gates, as it were. And I want to get there. And I want to walk in. And I know there's a Savior who will welcome me there when I arrive. I'm going to heaven. I'm not perfect. And I make mistakes. If you've been baptized into the blood of Christ and been washed with the regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, then you're going there too. And I would love, I would love very little more than for all of us to just sit around and sing every song in the book about going to heaven because it is such an encouragement and it's supposed to be such an encouragement. When you leave here today, Consider, other people need to know about that. Not how good a person you are, or not that you keep your words clean and pure, or that you keep your conduct undefiled so that other people can see that God's working in you. All of those things are true for sure. But brag about the salvation that you have. You're going home, you're going to heaven. No better place for us to be. So count it down. Again, you don't know the day or the hour, but you can look forward to at the end of time being received and told, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the rest of the Father. I want to go to heaven. I want you to go with me. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter holy places by the blood of Jesus. 
let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful and let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near every breath you take is one more closer to his return or to your last. And whether he comes before your life is over or whether he delays even longer, there will be a day when you meet your Savior face to face. And if you're a Christian, it'll be said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter in. Don't you want to go to that land? Because of that, let us keep on pressing toward the goal. If there's something that you need to correct, if there's assurance that you need, don't leave here today not sure of your destination, not sure if God is waiting for you, not sure if you can get into that land. If you need assurance, that's what we're supposed to have so that you can leave here and later brag about your heavenly destination. If you need to fix something in your life so that that can be yours, make it known before you depart. 